Hey guys, Ivan here, and we are only hours away from the prejudging of the Open Olympia. However, the MPC News Online posted a video of Derek Lansford posing at five weeks out of Mr. Olympia, and we get to see here basically what kind of improvements Derek Lansford made. We cannot see what kind of conditioning he's actually bringing to the stage based on like his face and stuff like that, uh, the way his clothes are fitting him. It seems like he's going to be in really good condition, but what we can see here is the improvements that he made in the offseason. And I gotta tell you guys, it seems like Derek Lansford is winning the Mr. Olympia because he definitely made a ton of improvements he is actually looking freaking insane right here so this was at five weeks out once again they posted it right now because they probably didn't want to spoil the surprise but based on what i'm seeing right here damn like you're gonna see in a second in a couple of poses the crazy improvements that this guy was actually able to make in this past off season now uh, as you can see side chest looks very good and here is actually where you will see a lot of improvements it's from the back now his back even last year was one of the best backs of all time and nobody at this year's mr olympia is touching him in the back department not just in the size of the back itself but like the back poses and at five weeks out he was actually in really good condition i mean look at the glutes he was already freaking separated everywhere glutes were shredded back was shredded so as far as his conditioning that's no concern he was already in very good condition at five weeks out now take a look at his back when he hits the back lat spread this is way before he got in shape and actually peaked for the show look at the freaking lats right here i mean his back double was his best pose last year but i think this year it might be back lat spread because he actually added more muscle to those freaking lats I mean, Hyde Japan also has a nice uh, back lat spread that has a lot of weight you know, through the lats, but Derek is just a different level. Now, as far as uh, Derek's weaknesses last year, I would say it was definitely, you know, the details in the front upper body, like the, the shoulders and the chest, maybe the arms when he lifts them up, but more so than anything, I think it was the legs, the size of the legs, especially from the front. And I think that's where he made the most progress. Look at the freaking legs right now. Are these legs look like weak legs to you? Hell no. Hell no. Look at these freaking legs right here. They're looking absolutely insane. They're super massive right now, actually. I mean, at five weeks out, they were. I don't know how much of this thickness he actually lost in the process in the five weeks. But again... He was in very good condition, even at five weeks out. He didn't have to, like, suffer too much to get in, in, in contest conditions. He was already very, very lean. The abs, however, did not improve much, but whoever improved abs? I mean, can you, can you name somebody who had poor abs and then somehow started having, like, super deep and separated abs? That never happens, basically. That's totally genetic. I mean, calves, you can grow calves, but abs... If you don't have them, you probably won't have them. I mean, maybe he would be able to, like, make them thicker, but he would, like, grow his waist as well, his obliques and so on. So, yeah, like, the, the changes here won't be that drastic, but as far as the legs, I think he definitely gained quite a bit of size in the legs. And, again, at five weeks out, he was very lean, so he didn't have to suffer down too much. So I don't think he lost a lot of this, a lot of this size, a lot of this fullness. And another thing, like when we say we don't want the 212 guys winning the Open, we want the bigger guys. I mean, does Derek here look like a 212 guy to you? If you compare him to Sean Clarida now or Keon Pearson, come on, guys. This guy is a massive, massive bodybuilder. Yeah, short, sure. Not as short as Sean Clarida, but short. But he is so freaking wide. I mean, so round, so massive. This is far beyond the 212. I don't know what his weight is right now. I would guess he is around 250 here, 245 maybe. And on stage, I mean, how much does he need to lose from this point? Like 15 pounds, 20 pounds? So on a stage, I think he will be like 230, 235 maybe even. Yeah, again, very lean at five weeks out. The improvements are definitely visible. 
Which was expected, you know, because he recently switched to the Open, he only had one off-season to actually focus on growing and on competing in the Open, so he had another year, a full year, of focusing on improving without worrying about his weight at all, and I think, look at the change now, the way, the way Hunter actually made him do this pose, it actually looks better. Uh, so, again, with one year, another one year of focusing on growth, he definitely made progress and I think he definitely made more progress than Hardy. I don't think Hardy could have grown anymore, really. I think Hardy is maxed out. But I'm not saying he can't lose to Hardy. You know, if Hardy shows up at his usual size, but ripped to the bones, the way he was at the Arnold Classic, it's going to be a battle. It's definitely going to be a battle. But as far as Andrew and Samson winning, I mean, unless they show something absolutely insane, I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, after seeing what Derek looked like at five weeks out, I'm pretty sure he's going to win again, you know, I don't think the other guys uh, have what it takes to, to knock out this champion, I don't think that's going to happen, you know, and I think in order to win the Mr. Olympia, you need to knock out Derek Lansford, it's not like with the big Remy or with Hari Japan, you know, Derek is basically the perfect poster boy, they want to see him win, I'm sure they want, Mr. Olympia is, the, is a business, IFBB is a, is a business for sure, so as long as uh, he is on, and if he improved, which he did, yeah, he's most likely winning the Mr. Olympia. What do you guys think? Tell me down below. Alright, the next thing we got is a statement from Matt Jansen, who is of course coaching Sean Clarida, who is receiving a lot of criticism right now. A lot of people are saying that he's done as a coach because of what happened this year. I mean, he failed quite badly with Quinton Araya. That was a big disappointment. After that, Nick Walker was out of the Mr. Olympia. He was nowhere near being in shape. Whose fault was that? Was it Nick's? Was it Matt's? A lot of people think that it was Matt's fault. And now he's failing again with Sean Clarida. Now, I gotta say, no matter what these guys did, basically, there was no chance ever of Sean beating Keon. Keon is just so much more genetically blessed, structurally, proportionally, he's a taller guy, he's a bigger guy, and he brought the conditioning, he made improvements, there was nothing Sean could have done here, not this year, but Sean could have looked better, Matt could have done a better job with him, now he issued a statement, and he says uh, 23 versus 24, and he shows a couple of photos, you're gonna see them all in a second, uh, he says, judges ripped into us pretty hard last year for what we brought, and we took it into heart, and made the changes asked of us, some may prefer the bigger, fuller look, but the judges didn't, and their opinion is the only one that matters, he says, missed peak, too heavy, lack of stomach control, overall not the Sean they were, they are used to seeing, Regardless of tonight's outcome, I'm so proud of Sean for being willing to adjust his mindset and do what was needed. We are facing a great champion tonight in, uh, uh, in Keon and uh, knew that we had our work cut out for us. Again, no matter what these guys did, it wouldn't have changed the fact that Keon was going to win the Mr. Olympia. But to be honest, the Sean Clarida we are seeing right here at a 2024 Mr. Olympia looks like a Sean Clarida from like 10 years ago size-wise, he did not have his size, he did not have his crazy fullness that he's known for, he is a shadow of himself, I have to be blunt, I have to be honest, that's what I'm seeing right here, he was, uh, the, the same thing happened to him, like uh, the, the thing that happened with uh, Quinton Araya, like he came in condition, but maybe, maybe like 10% better condition than last year, like 5% better, but with so much loss in fullness, in density and thickness, it was crazy. Keon knew that this was their game plan, basically. They spoke about this very openly. The game plan was to stay leaner and to try and bring something like more conditioned to the Mr. Olympia stage. And Keon, even though Keon improved the conditioning, he did not play Sean's game. He played his own game. He actually showed up heavier. I think he was like five pounds heavier. I mean, Kian and his coach, Patrick Tour, they played their own game. They brought Kian the best way he could look. And that's leaner, definitely a bit leaner than last year, and bigger, fuller. You know, full as a house. I don't think Kian could have been any fuller. So, Patrick Tour nailed the pick with Kian here. 
just like last year, but this year just Kion was better, Kion was bigger, more conditioned, but the peak was spot on, he was full, he was blasting full and, and lean, and that was Matt's job as well. Yeah, okay, I get it, the judges' feedback was to bring him sharper, but not super flat, not 10 pounds smaller or however much weight he lost from last year, he definitely looked like a, like a young Sean Clarida from like 5 or 7 years ago, uh, look at the size difference, the fullness in the legs, in the arms, in the chest, I mean maybe if he like last year drank 1 liter less of water or took uh, a quarter thiazide, that would be it, like he didn't have to be much much drier than that, and this year he came in just flat, so I think it's, it's Matt's fault, I think Matt completely missed the peak again, and Matt was kind of known for a while for really hitting the peaks every time with his athletes, he was at, at one point in my eyes top 3 coach in the world, now after this year his stock fell down bad, and it happens sometimes to the coaches, like Chad Nichols basically created Ronnie Coleman, he was the best coach in the world for a long time, and lately he started also failing with his guys, like with Big Ramy, with uh, William Bonac while, while they work together, I don't know what is the reason, are they like more focused on business maybe, you know, Matt especially since he's uh, a part owner uh, of uh, Raw and Revive, uh, or I don't know, maybe they're just losing their instincts, I don't know, I don't know, but uh, yeah, Matt is definitely failing this year, this is the third time, third athlete, a top athlete, again, he's most likely going to play second, which is what would happen if he, if he, if, if Sean was 100% on, probably, but I'm just, I'm judging his look, Sean's look, and it's not good, it's definitely not good, and in my opinion, I think Carrie Baggio and Angel Calderon have a good chance of defeating him, actually, at the finals, we'll see, but yeah, the fact is, the peak at this show was missed, for sure. Alright, so we talked about, uh, like, a potential dark horse in, in the classic physique division, who is going to place after Chris, Wesley, uh, Ramon, uh, Urs, Brion, and I think it's it's probably going to be this guy right here, you know, since uh, Stefan Matala is not doing the show for not being able to make the weight, if he knew that they were actually measuring the hair as well, he would probably, you know, show up, but he didn't know that, and uh, so Stefan Matala is not in the mix, but uh, Niall Darwin, I think that's how he pronounced his uh, first name, Niall, if I'm wrong, guys, correct me down below in the comment section, uh, this guy, Niall Darwin, is uh, one of those guys that can definitely be a huge surprise, I mean, he's definitely known for his super small waist, and after seeing these photos, I don't know exactly when these were taken, they were posted today, uh, after seeing these, man, this, this, this is definitely the guy that can, like, take out Brion Ainsley as well, maybe even push Urs Kalecinski, I, I don't see anybody beating Ramon Wesley and, and, and Sibam, I mean, those guys are top three for sure, but as far as that fourth, this guy can sneak in for sure, what do you guys think, tell me down below, and finally we got an off-season update from Regan Grimes, who is 298 right now, but if he wants to be good, he needs to be 320 pounds, just joking, just joking about this one, we're not gonna talk about Regan Grimes right now, hours away from the Mr. Olympia, uh, that's gonna do it for this video guys, stay tuned for the pre-judging of the men's open division later, in a couple of hours, Thank you so much for watching guys, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, uh, see you soon, all the best and bye bye.